Hey gang, it's Will from Testin. And it's Norm from Testin. Norm and Chan, there's nothing I like more than action sports. Action sports and also taking selfies of yourself. Of course, who doesn't or, love a good the selfie? World. You know, a selfie for the world is just photography. Wow. You know, sometimes I like to think that I should aim the camera away from myself toward the rest of the world That's and right. see what's out there more. So today we're testing the Feiyu Tech G3 Ultra. It's a three axis stabilizer for GoPro cameras. This is like a thing that you'd hang on the bottom of a quadcopter except for it's for holding in your hand and for a GoPro. That's right. Uh, when we were at CS, we tested that Inspire 1 a handheld gimbal mm -hmm. mount, which uh, DJI still hasn't released yet. But people let us know there are three axis oh, gimbal stabilizers know, yeah. out there for cameras like the GoPro. And so we found one, uh, B&H actually loaned us this one for a month and we've been trying to integrate it into our video shoots. Uh, so to give you a sense of how it works, uh, there's two motors here, three motors actually, one right here, one right here. Three axis gimbal. One right here. You actually, you can rotate this way, this way, and this way. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a button on the bottom, there's batteries on the inside, the rechargeable batteries, and you press the button, and then it locks and turns on. So in this default mode, the GoPro stays steady mm -hmm. while my arm can move around it. So basically, it's working kind of like a steady cam in this mode, right? Mm -hmm. um, although, obviously, without all the, the mass and stuff attached to that and the harness for your body, but you can shoot relatively stable stuff. Does it do anything to help with um, like shock movements and stuff like no. that? Okay. So this is not like an optical stabilizer that you have built into your camera or even some digital stabilization. Or a shock mount or whatever. Yeah. All it does is smooth out your movements. You know, when you're holding a big camera, or even a GoPro, and you try to walk around, some natural movements of your arms rotates the GoPro. Mm -hmm. And this eliminates that rotation. So if I'm walking, for example, toward you, and my hand moves naturally like that, mm -hmm. that rotational movement then get stabilized. Does it work better GoPro. if you hold it like this? It does. It okay. works a little better like that. Now there are three stabilization modes on this. I'm using the first stabilization mode. There's a, a button on the back actually uh, that lets you change between them. Mm -hmm. The first stabilization mode will stabilize this vertical movement so mm -hmm. I can kind of drop down and it will stay flat. Kind of like mimic a jib shot basically. Yeah, okay. exactly. Handheld, handheld jib shot right there. But if I wanted to rotate toward you, it actually has a little buffer area and mm. then follows along and rotates. Hello, camera. So I can turn here and it'll rotate. But if I'm holding it this way, it will still do the rotation if I do a little turn that way. Oh, so, you, so it rotates based on this bottom motor, not on or, the... Or based on, based on its oh, orientation. based on whichever orient... Okay. Yeah. That's so interesting. Actually, that seems pretty useful. It is useful. The, the buffer isn't as smooth of a, a panning motion. It doesn't really ease into it. Oh, and it there's, just, there's not like an analog stick or anything like that in the back that would let you have more fine control over exactly. this either. Um, so you have to actually, you know, plan out your movements, get a, get used to it, so you're not doing, you know, f forward shots, and then suddenly it's doing a, a hard turn or a it, turn that way. I mean, just to be clear, all of these types of things are for, for planned shots. Yes. Like you're not going to be impromptu with this and get the results that you want. I not don't think. not really. Um, the secondary mode uh, will do the same thing, uh, that follow motion stuff, also for the uh, for tilting up and down. Okay. So there it goes. And you see that it has like a buffer. I can tilt it up. Oh, and so okay, so it's literally the same movement except for instead of just the, the horizontal axis, it's also giving you the vertical axis. Two axes. Okay. Um, and then the third mode, if I push down the button, will then do a full stabilization. Wow. So only points in one direction. Then I can walk in front of it, I can walk behind it. Now these motors only go so far. What's the range of movement on them, do you know? I don't know exactly how many degrees, but already. So it I'm looks like it. it's less than 360 because yep. there's a stopper. Yep, absolutely less than 360. But here's how you do then your selfie cam, for example. Okay. You can hold it out in front, yeah, and then you can walk. I did this yesterday it, while I was riding my unicycle. Have a look in front of, you, look at you. Exactly. The stabilization actually does work. We actually attached a second GoPro to it using our little, little arm here, which I can. It just snaps on. It's like a microphone holder. Yep. Um, and comparing the footage, uh, it is much more stable. For example, walking up and down stairs, or even walking forward uh, with this stabilization. Uh, than without. Okay. Um, it's not perfect. Like when I was riding on the unicycle or when you hold onto it while you're using a bicycle or something like that, you still get all the bumps of the road. You get you're to, just yeah. getting a more gentle pans and turns and, exactly. and you can kind of you can kind of shock mount it with your arm, but it seems like even that's still not perfect. It requires a fair amount of finesse to use. And it will require some post work. So mm -hmm. if you shoot for example, at 4K or 2.7K with the GoPro Hero 3 mm -hmm. or 4, you can then put that in Premiere, run a warp stabilizer, yeah. and, and crop in and filter out some of those movements. The, to some extent. the smaller jumps, for sure. The very smaller jumps. Um, so what, does this only work with GoPros or does it work with other cameras? The mount only works with the GoPro. Mm. Uh, it does work with either the three or the four. My biggest complaint is that I wanted to mount this onto a long pole and there is no other mount. There's no quarter inch screw mount. There's actually oh. a power button 
on the bottom. And so it's so all the way to, to make a big this. boom, like, yeah. a, like a, a homebrewed jib. Exactly. Basically. I want to put this on the end of a pole and get it so we can like sweep down. But the only way to do that is to use something like a clamp mm. and, the, and then to connect that to a pole. So we were shooting on location and I had this attached to the end of a pole with a clamp a few weeks ago. And the thing that I knew, immediately knew I needed was a viewfinder for the GoPro. So you, need, yeah. you also need, you know, whether you 3D print it or make something, a way to mount a phone on the handle for this thing so you can actually see what the camera sees rather than just kind of guessing. Because right. even with the wide angle GoPro lens, you're still doing a lot of guesswork. You with need that Wi-Fi connection yeah. to get a live feed. And then it's even a little laggy, which is rough, so. So I think it's an interesting product. We actually did see it at conventions. Mm -hmm. People have been walking around, you know, you know in the past year or so, past couple of years, you've seen people with hats with GoPros mm -hmm. on them. And I could definitely see people walking around with GoPros going to you know, convention floor walks outside with this kind of thing. Um, the technology <laughs> works. It's not super expensive. You know, it's cheaper than your GoPro. It's at 250 bucks, mm -hmm. cheaper than the actual camera itself. Uh, but there are some limitations. It seems like it's a neat tool to get a specific kind of shot if you have a need for that. But it's not something I would add to my bag if I just was taking pictures of my family or you know on vacation and stuff like that. Absolutely not. Yeah, it's already kind of a kind of a bulky thing. Um, uh, how's the battery life, Norm? But I haven't had to recharge it much at all. Okay. Uh, we do recharge it before every shoot, uh, but it definitely will not outlast the video shooting. Long you mean the the GoPro? Well, the the gimbal will outlast the GoPro, not yeah, the other way exactly. around. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So that's um, the Feiyu G3 Ultra. Uh, it's on sale in places like B&H. Thank them for, uh, for loaning us a unit. Uh, we have some sample footage, but it's an interesting thing. You might see shots from this in future videos on Tested. 250 bucks? 250 bucks. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.